Yes, it's time for Swami Namics. Uh, in the run-up to uh, the all-important vote on account on Monday the 17th of uh, this month, uh, we've been uh, discussing various aspects of that uh, vote on account and today we're going to talk about the UPA Economic Report Card. Uh, Swami Nathan Nair, a consulting editor, joins in as always for that special discussion. Uh, Swami, as the UPA goes to polls, will the people judge them on 10 years of 8 plus average growth as Rahul Gandhi and Chidambaram have been saying or on the last two years of sub 5% growth? The Congress party refused to celebrate fast growth in UPA 1, refused to celebrate it. In fact, when they had the 20th anniversary of economic reform from 1991 to 2011, they refused to celebrate it. Here was this party that, you know, only wanted to talk about Narega or Amadmi, did not want to talk about growth. Now, today, that when growth is going downhill, suddenly they are averaging over 10 years and saying, you know, an average of 10 years was 7.5%. Excuse me, averaging doesn't work. There's a famous saying that many people have drowned in a lake which was only three feet deep on average. What matters is not the average. What matters is the actual experience of the moment. Experience of the moment is that we are experiencing two su sub successive years of ultra-low growth accompanied by ultra-high inflation. It is a very toxic mix. And no matter what the Congress may say about a 10-year record, who cares? You got re-elected in 2009 as a reward for that first part of high growth. That past is over. Question is what happened after that? After that, regrettably, it has been downhill, downhill, downhill. Uh, the Congress, I think, may well end up less than 100 seats, the lowest tally in its entire history, and it will be fully deserved. I love the analogy of drowning in a lake which was at an average deep, just three feet. But uh, Swami, who is to be blamed for the slowdown? The government, global factors? Because there is no denying that most emerging markets have indeed slowed down. Do you buy Mr. Chidamam's logic when he says that slowdown was an unintended outcome of the stimulus that was given in 2008? Well, let's say this. Uh, the global conditions have not been very good. There was a slowdown from 5.3% to 3.9% to about 3% over a three-year period. But, you know, the slowdown was not as catastrophic as the collapse in 2008-9. And in 2008-9, when world growth just fell like this and we went into deep recession, the Indian economy still did 6.9%. So to just quote international things to justify 4.5 or 4.9% growth in the last two years, that I'm afraid won't wash. Raghuram Rajan has ventured the view that all of our slowdown, maybe one-third can be attributed to global factors and two-thirds our own fault. I think that's not a bad guess. That's Swami, you're obviously very critical of the UPA government and its performance. But let's talk about the Finance Minister P. Chidambaram, who will be presenting the vote on account on Monday. You've always maintained that he's definitely one of the best finance ministers we've had in the last two decades. How do you rate his current term? You know, the fact remains that you can't fault him on his reform agenda. He's pushed FTI reforms, market link pricing of gas, uh, partial diesel deregulation. He's done his bit. What could he have done differently? I would give him, I'm afraid, very low marks. The reason I would give him low marks is that he was called upon to rescue the economy, right? So the Congress still had one and a half years to go before the election. And Chidambaram was supposed to turn two things around. He was supposed to tame inflation and re-spark growth. He has failed on both those accounts. Uh, you can argue that things were difficult, they were not easy. I agree. But still, at the end of it all, what you have to judge a person on is not intentions, is not even individual measures. The question is, what was the actual outcome? Did he accelerate growth? Did he bring down inflation? The answer is no and no again. No, he didn't actually do any of that. But uh, Swami, if you were to write Mr. Chidamram's vote and account speech that many believe may sound like his swan song, his farewell speech, what would your pitch be? Well, since I'm not Chidambaram, I'm not sure that Chidambaram would follow my advice. I would go out of my way to emphasize all that had gone wrong on policy in the last 10 years. You just said, how is it that we started off on this brilliant wicket? And how have we ended up in such a sorry mess? And these plainly are the reasons for it. We have neglected growth. 
we have got into the situation where we have created a jungle of controls, a new license permit Raj we have created. The only way we were getting through that earlier on was through corruption of various kinds. You paid your money and you got your permissions. Now that that's no longer possible with the CAG, with Anna Hazare, with the new mood of the people. If you find that you can't bribe your way, the rules and regulations are such that the economy is coming to a halt. And that we need a thorough overhaul of all those rules and regulations. Will Chidambaram dare say that? Not a chance in a million. On the contrary, he will pretend, once again he will average over 10 years and say, you know, what a great job we've done. It will not pass muster with the public. It may pass muster with 10 Janpat. And that's the only audience ultimately he really cares about. Doesn't everybody in the Congress party just care about that one single audience? Swaminathan, I appreciate you being with us on business tonight. Uh, every day of this uh, week as a run-up to the vote and account on Swaminomics.